the news is lying. They're, they're lying. The amount of people that I saw dead was more than, than, than what they said. I'm gonna take a couple days off from posting because I literally watched somebody die right in front of me. You're trying to breathe, but you can't. Literally, all you can hear is people screaming for help. Screaming, people screaming that they couldn't breathe. What was so crazy, like people were screaming help, trying to tell Travis, Travis Scott, they was like help, the whole crowd was just going to help, help, help. And he just kept going, bro. And I'm still kind of in shock about it. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I saw girls convulsing on the sides. I saw people passed out in the crowd. I saw people being carried out on stretchers. I saw people being crowd surfed over, passed out. I've gone to multiple concerts and I've never felt the like way I felt watching him as I have other artists. No one in my section at the time was moving because I think everyone was just in shock of how crazy and how panicked that everyone was. Um, there was a lot of fear in people's eyes, you can see. I mean, this year was just something was different it was just the energy was crazy I man i can't even begin to put it into words for you guys but as soon as he jumped out and onto the stage it was like an energy took over huge Travis Scott fan. I'm a huge fan of music and I was just a huge fan of him, but yeah, yeah. after the events, you know, I, I don't get so. I'm 100% convinced that this was literally like an energy harvest. He was, Travis Scott was snatching souls. After tonight, bro, like God really showed me like, you know, like stay away from that shit, bro. Like that shit not for you. Cause like he sacrificed so many people's lives tonight. Like for real, like so many people's lives are gone tonight. I don't have any words, you know. What to say? I'm blessed. God gave me, you know, blessing. But what happened now? What happened to my blessing now? I. I want my baby back. We're grieving. We're in pain. We want you guys to know our brother was the most amazing person ever to us. The closest thing. He took care of my father, my brother, my mother's over there. He died saving his fiance. Hello, YouTube family. It's me, Miss Dana Ashley. Thank you for being with me today. This video is not a topic that I personally wanted to cover, but I felt led to do so for the benefit of the young, younger adults and teens who may be trying to make sense of the mess that happened, the mass casualty event that happened at Astroworld in Houston. In case you're not aware, and like me, avoid topics on celebrities. During the concert of singer Travis Scott, 10 young people lost their lives. And here, I would like to discuss the deeper spiritual significance of that. And I included some of the testimonies of some of the families mourning because I don't want anyone to lose sight of their loss here while I talk about some of these very dark topics. So please pray for them. I'm making this video partially in response to the fact checkers. Ah, oh, those fact checkers. Who, as usual, are dismissing claims without evidence. The fact checkers who are trying to quickly shove under the rug claims of this tragedy being related to a tannic, with an S, itchuals, with an R, if you know what I mean. I made this to address comments I've seen popping up everywhere like this one. I think it's absolutely ridiculous how people believe this to be a satanic. Ritual. It's obviously just extreme negligence by everyone in charge. Before you young adults can just blindly believe that TikTok is justified in deleting videos talking about claims of human sacrifice, 
you need to first understand what the symbols of such things are and were they being presented at this concert? Is there any concrete evidence of these deaths being intentional? The answer is a resounding yes. And in this video, I will prove it. It's important knowledge I'm going to be discussing here because it's going to show you how to interpret the truth in plain sight all around you because it's so much bigger than this concert. For some of those who did attend, like you saw in the intro, they witnessed the dark spiritual truth of what happened here. And that is a huge silver lining. I have grown up on Travis Scott, n number one artist, loved him. I've been to multiple of his concerts before he was even in Travis Scott. I've never experienced something like this. That man is done. That so many young people already are because of this, waking up from their slumber regarding the true purpose of celebrities and the deeper and darker purpose of entertainment and music. So what on earth could these young people be talking about? Was this really a harvest of souls? And could it really be related to anything satanic? First of all, there does seem to be some pretty heavy negligence. We have many testimonies of security guards who were paid to be there that had zero training. Some even admitted that the majority of the other guards hired wound up partying out in the audience themselves. I'm now the only, the only security at my station, I'm the only security because everybody else left and went to go enjoy the concert. We have people admitting that the lack of medical equipment to help with things like heart attacks was nearly non-existent. They didn't have enough equipment. They didn't have enough defibrillators for heart attack patients. They didn't have enough ambulance carts to get to people that needed help. I'm here and I need medical assistance. And they only had one oxygen tank, one oxygen tank to share. With 50,000 people. We have videos of police officers standing around, casually hanging out at the end of the show under the stage as if nothing is happening. When at that point, hundreds were already severely injured and many had died with no one helping them. I'd like to ask why. Now, some of you old school followers of me on YouTube may find some of this 101, but again, this is mainly for those who are not familiar with what the phrase satanic ritual even means. It's for those people thinking, what do you mean Satanism? Don't be ridiculous. There's no such thing as Satan. This is just art. This video is for you. To quickly get the accountability of Travis Scott out of the way, by now everyone has seen that video of him singing, yeah, yeah, over and over with this lifeless body. Meanwhile, at that point, there were already many injured and calling to stop the show. But he just goes right back into his song. To give some quick context, here's what normally happens when an audience member even begins to overheat and pass out. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Yo. We got a little problem Pick up here. Up. Pick him up right Everybody now. Everybody up. Sorry, you guys. We gotta look out for safety first, for real. Someone's going to the game. Excuse me, make a date right in the middle. This happened last night as well. Are you all right? Can you see? Can someone look like they care, please? Carefully, very calmly, move like this right now. Side to side, everybody that's in the middle, move, move. Move, move, move. Thank you very much. Let's go over it one more time. When someone falls, what do you do? But Travis Scott didn't do that. This next clip, in my opinion, should put him in jail. I'm sure that won't happen. But at this point, to set this up, there's an ambulance in the audience that can't get through. There are people climbing up to the cameramen, screaming at them, people are dead, which causes him to pause briefly, only for Travis to take a vote and then escalate it further instead of helping the dying people. Everybody feel to the middle, feet up in the sky. 
He just said, if everybody good put your middle finger up to the sky. And two more guys come on stage to try and tell him that people are severely hurt. Two hands in the sky. Two hands up, y'all. Two hands up. Y'all know what y'all came to do. Chase me. Let's go. I want to make this motherfucking ground shake. Damn it. But the proof of premeditation gets even worse. Take a look at the posters for the show. Any clues here related to sacrifice? Well, at first glance, we see the ever so displayed one eye symbolism, the all seeing eye. That is very commonly associated with ill, you know, Illuminati symbols, but few realize this goes way further back than Freemasonry. It goes back to Egyptian mythology and the eye of Horus. In one version of the myth, it was Horus himself who gouged out his own eye as a sacrifice to bring his father Osiris back to life. But what do you know? Osiris was synonymous with the underworld, death, evil, and disorder. So this sacrifice enabled Osiris to remain king of the underworld of the dead. It's said the eye of Horus represents protection, but I'd like to ask, protection of what? Protection of their god of death. Well, no shortage of eyeballs here on this poster. In fact, take a look at this um, moment Travis popped out on the stage. This creepy thing is like a story tall. And look at this. Note while this was while Drake had joined him much later in the show when most were collapsing and several had already died. Stage full of eyeballs representing sacrifice to the underworld, all while they chant go crazy and playing for keeps to a crowd that had already sent some to their death. But back to the poster again. Take a look at this image here. Not just the eyeballs, but the eyeballs inside the hand. What on earth, right? I'll show you. Now I'll take a look at this creature. This is Pale Man. Pale Man is a character that was featured in an Oscar-winning film named Pan's Labyrinth. But get this. Pale Man was none other than a child-eating monster. Even deeper, that pale man character was admittedly based on a painting called Saturn Devouring His Son. Now that point, with this being related to Saturn and Saturn worship, is very important to remember. Because Saturn and Saturn worship is ancient, and it is known to be represented by the color black and the shape of a cube, as well as a hexagon. Some may wonder why would Saturn, most would think of as round with rings, right, be affiliated with the cube? But in truth, the pole of Saturn is a highly structured hexagonal one, as you can see here. And the hexagon contains the cube hidden three-dimensionally within it. And what do you know is displayed at the front of Astro World? But Travis Scott coming out of a black cube. What? Listen, Travis Scott is only one of many henchmen for the large Saturnian worshipping cult. But remember, these symbols are openly disclosed so you know the truth in many places known to be controlled by the most supposedly elite and respected aspects of society. But make no mistake, these symbols are fingerprints with Saturnian and sudden god worship and Luciferian at their core. Still haven't seen enough proof about Travis? The date of this show, November 5th, 2021, just happens to be 666 months and six days from the formation of the Church of Satan. In a bird's eye view, the stage shows us none other than the upside down cross leading directly into the portal of a stage which featured a perfect representation of the pits of hell. The upside down cross is a very well-known symbol of the occult and atheism. The very shirt that Travis Scott wore during the concert featured a blue human form walking through a plane in the middle. Pass through the plane, it comes out the other side red and sporting horns. How blatant must they be? On the same stage with this portal, there is a sign that says, See you on the other side. This is what these young people were watching pre-show. 
What other side do you think they're talking about? This theme of going through Vortex, different universe, other side, was the show's most repeated theme. Here's another poster where you see the roller coaster tracks. Can't get off a roller coaster, right? Going into the vortex with the eye of sacrifice to the underworld, still watching. Again, for one to say, well, this can't be a satanic ritual, the person making that statement would need to know what one of those looks like. Essentially, these ancient rituals tied to human sacrifice have been going on not for hundreds, but thousands of years. The gods associated with these offerings are tied to worship Saturn, which we showed you. Saturn, again, known to eat children, even his own children, and often seen with a scythe. God Saturn was also known as Kronos, Baal, or Molech. These early 1900s films featured scenes of sacrifices to Molech and Baal. their favorite being the young and innocent. But back to Travis Scott, anything look familiar here? Well, I suppose it's a coincidence as well that the Travis Scott Gates to Astrofest and the fall edition of Houston Magazine front cover featured Travis Scott's head as an open mouth Molech, complete with people symbolically walking straight into it. As a marketing and branding person myself, there is no good reason for this choice that isn't weird. It's not alluring, or beautiful, it's disturbing. Eerie at best, but when you know that this is the mouth of Molech that demands human sacrifice? To many of us now, the thought of people in ancient days willing to worship these gods, to bring in a good harvest, or to provide wealth by giving over your child's life to them seems unreal and ridiculous. But actually, the word worship only means to revere greatly. How many of these young adults simply revered greatly Travis Scott? How many worshipped Travis Scott and paid with their lives? This is nine-year-old Ezra, the youngest known victim of this concert. And if you're wondering why such a young child would be there, perhaps it's because they have marketed Travis Scott to the very young through Fortnite, popular with preteens, as well as Travis Scott McDonald Happy Meals. Hmm. Those target from three to 10-year-olds. There's the cube of Saturn again. What you may not know is the sacrifice of the young and innocent often gains more power for the evil of this world. You see, Lucifer wants the destruction of the innocent because he knows it's one of the things God hates the most. Maybe you're thinking, oh, Dana, these rituals were ages ago. Come on. No one does crazy stuff like that anymore. Okay. It's time for me to get real with you. Let's take a look at this document that is very interesting and very disturbing. This was created within the criminal division of a police department to help its officers in training learn how to identify homicides that were committed as a part of occult rituals. It's very thorough and gives a detailed background of Satanism, its rules and language around the covens, their symbols, their satanic holidays, and much more. I thought I knew a great deal about these groups, but there is a lot I did not want to know. It's not for sensitive eyes, but if you do want to read it, it's linked in the description box below. You may have thought of until now, there is no such thing as Satanism, but seeing this very plainly laid out checklist of the evidence and proofs of the profoundly evil habits of the people following this religion, you have to at least admit um, there are certainly others out there who not only believe in the kingdom of darkness, but who are willing to do very sick Things to appease him at the total devastation of others. In fact, there have been many people who have come forward with detailed testimonies admitting being involved in SRNA or atanic ritual abuse amongst not some rednecks in Alabama, okay, but those in high levels of society. 
elite political circles, high-level banking and global finance industries, people admitting and telling stories of what happens in these groups. For example, this man had not millionaire, but billionaire clients, and though he was warned early on about leaving your conscience at the door in order to join, he got involved anyway. He went to some of their events and thought their rituals were funny. These sacrifices to sin often involve not just drugs and alcohol, but many forms of sexual acts of perversion as another way to make Satan happy. By the way, that's why your music videos and your celebrities lead the young and innocent into these lifestyles too. Just saying. Titus op dat niveau speelde. Um, ik moet ook zeggen dat to put it carefully, most of these people followed not very mainstream religion. So, you have Catholics, Protestants, all sorts of religions. These people, most of them, were Luciferians. And then you can say, religion is a fairy tale. God doesn't exist. None of that is real. Well, for these people, it is truth and reality. And they served something immaterial, what they called Lucifer. And I also was in contact with those circles, only I laughed at it because to me they were just clients. So, I went to places called Churches of Satan. So now we are talking about Satanism. Yes. So, I visited these churches, just as a visitor, dropped by, and then they were doing their holy mass with naked woman and liquor and stuff. And it just amused me. I didn't believe in any of this stuff, and was far from convinced if any of this was real. It was just a spectacle to you. Yes. In my opinion, the darkness and evil is within the people themselves. I didn't make the connection yet. So I was a guest in those circles and it amused me greatly to see all those named women and the other things. But then at some point, I was invited, which is why I'm telling you all this, to participate in sacrifices abroad. That was the breaking point. Children. You were asked to do that? Yes. And I couldn't do that. Some others have shared pretty horrific stories confirming the sick role of child sacrifice because they were brought into it as children themselves. And, you know, tiny, tiny child. Um, I have a memory when I was between two and three years old of a ritual sacrifice and my father... Um, forcing me to put my hands on the ritual dagger and then he put his hands on mine and so rituals were were really horrific and the abuse was unimaginable but again we should warn you that parts of this report may be distressing friends of family and strangers and our family used to write me um Maybe uh, bought the babies I had. It would be hard to imagine more misery and suffering than what Teresa says she's had to endure. And us kids would be made to do things with the adults, and then a, a sacrifice would happen. The sacrifice uh, were these animal sacrifices. Animals and um, people. During these ceremonies, was Satan? The devil ever referred to? He was called Lucifer. Even Oprah featured a segment on this way back before network TV was completely compromised in 1989. You come from generations of ritualistic uh, abuse? Um, yes, my family has an extensive family tree and they keep track of who's been involved and who hasn't been involved. And, and this is a, this is, does everyone else think it's a nice Jewish family? 
from the outside you appear to be a nice Jewish girl. Definitely. And you all are worshipping the devil inside the home. Right. So well, when you were brought up in this, this kind of evilness, did you just think it was normal? Um, I've blacked out a lot of the memories I had um, because of my multiple personality disorder. But yes, I mean, it's like if you grow up with something, you think it's normal. But what think... kinds of things? You don't have to give us the gory details, but what kinds of things went on in the family? Um, well, there would be rituals in which babies would be sacrificed and you would have to, you know... Who's babies? Um, there were people who um, bred babies in our family. You witnessed the sacrifice? Right. Um, when I was very young, I was forced to participate in that, in which I had to sacrifice an infant. And the, the purpose of sacrifice is to what? Is to bring you what? What are you sacrificing for? For power. Uh-huh. Power. And what's your mother doing? Um, she's... In all of this? You know, she brought me to it. Both of my parents brought me to it. And where is she now? Um, she lives in the Chicago metropolitan area. She's on the Human Relations Commission of the town that she lives in. And she's an outstanding citizen. Nobody would suspect her. So, yeah, people who worship Lucifer are real. And so is the money, fame, and power their dark master offers them. Like this lady said, these people are sprinkled throughout all different levels of society, and certainly they are heading up the supposed entertainment industries. But by now, you know a few of the symbols to look for them for yourself. And I'm telling you guys this not for you to be afraid, but to be aware so you can have tools to fight against it. That's another main reason why I wanted to make this video, because this ritual was not a small deal. This wasn't Lady Gaga hanging above the stage with fake blood on her costume. This wasn't Billie Eilish singing, my Lucifer is lonely. Then she goes back to joking about not being able to drive yet. This sacrifice was not just symbolic. It was literal. Blood was spilled real time. Unlike all those other rituals, this one is in your face. He just kicked it up to a whole new level. It just got real. He's taunting you guys to say, see you on the other side as he's doing it. The other side is hell. And who can deny that the stage itself was a perfect representation of hell? I mean, this may sound crazy to people who have never even believed in Satan or hell, but there have been people who were taken to in dreams and visions to hell by God in order to show them, warn them what it is like so they could warn others. Bill Weiss is one of those people. And when you compare the experience these people had at the show to his visions of being in hell, it's beyond eerie. So when I was placed over next to this large raging pit of fire, mm -hmm. this pit was not the lake of fire talked about in Revelation 2013 through 15, but it's the current hell, Sheol, with flames raging high up into this open cavern. And again, it wasn't metaphorical or allegorical, real literal flames. The screams were so loud from just millions of people at the top of their lungs screaming. What are they saying? Nothing, Mick. You just can't scream. say anything. You're just screaming in agony. Uh, there's not enough air to breathe either. So you have to fight and gasp for even the tiniest bit of oxygen. It was just a nightmare. And seeing that and then also you're hearing people like screaming for help. It's like help, help. It's just like all of it put together, the heat, no oxygen, can't get out. Yeah. I mean, right. All of those like just added up together. Just I felt like it was God saying, hey, man, if you listen to this, this is what you're going to go through. But wow. you know, it works. And I think that what is being admitted to here as well, all these symbols of birth, death, transformation, are Satan being very bold and plainly stating what he is about to try to accomplish. I don't think the timing of this concert, look at your screen because we are banned from talking about this right now on YouTube. No coincidence, this concert was at the same time that something else was just announced. We are talking about five and 11 year old children. We are talking about the innocent. So you're going to have to connect the dots here. But they are willing to take out the young. I showed you their God demands it. But that thing that looked like a bird on fire at the beginning of the show, it looked like a fallen angel flying toward the crowd on fire. The first thing he showed you, it actually represents one of these sicko's favorite archetypes, the phoenix. This is all about death 
and rebirth, burning the old to the ground to bring in the new, because they told this whole planet about this Travis Scott. Who the heck is Travis Scott? I had no idea two weeks ago, and probably billions of other didn't either, but now they do because they've splattered this ritual all over the globe, world wide. This is 100% about transformation and regeneration, death and rebirth on a worldwide scale, but you can be sure it won't be for the good of the people. It's about destruction, burning away everything to bring in a new world order, and they don't mind taking out some more of the innocent to do it. And I'll quickly touch on the final part of this. It's another center topic, so I can't say much, but these kids were having what? Heart attacks and seizures? And panic attacks? Open up a mosh pit literally around a corpse and have someone perform from the crowd perform CPR on them. The medical staff was completely overwhelmed. That's not their fault. They were not given the tools to do their jobs. One AED and we had three, four, five cardiac arrests going on. Once we started having the mass casualty incident where uh, people were starting, uh, we started has, having CPR on uh, several people, and it happened all at once. I mean, I know Chief King, you mentioned uh, 938. Uh, it, it seemed like it happened with just over the course of just a few minutes. Suddenly, we had several people down on the ground experience some type of cardiac arrest or some type of um, uh, crim uh, medical episode. C there's CPR being done in the crowds. There's like, there's, it looks like what would, would be a mosh pit. There's no room for mosh pits. There's only room for the eight people on the ground that are dead having CPR done. In the VIP section, it was so many bodies laid out. People was getting pulled out who was fainted. And the people were trying, the medics were trying to give them CPR and they was flipping them over. And like they was literally turning them black and blue. Like I never seen no, I never seen death in my life, bro. Just by me alone, it was probably like 10 people laid out dead. And like once the medics tried to help them, they wasn't responding. They moved to the next person. It was nothing they could do. So we are hearing many eyewitness reports of sudden waves of passing out, being unable to breathe, and cardiac arrest. Panic attack and seizures were something I saw many written testimonies of. But suffice it to say, there are some pretty major discrepancies here between one, general causes of dying, and two, the scope, sheer number of people who seem to have died. That is not a normal part of the reason why people die when these things happen. I can show you right here. I can prove that right here. In 1989, we had an event where people actually were crushed. It was called the Hillsborough Disaster in South Yorkshire, England. A lot of people died. And if you can look through here, almost every single one of them, it says asphyxia, not heart attacks. Nearly every death was listed via asphyxia. That's not how many of these young people died. Look at all these people giving CPR at this event. Now look at this document and see plain as day, okay? Pro tip people for critical thinking. When you want to look at an event and analyze it, first, get as many eyewitness testimonies as you can get. And second, listen to what the local news says in the beginning, OK, because after the mainstream gets a hold of it, forget it. They're just going to twist it into whatever they want. But the early reports admitted many heart attacks were going on. This wasn't only about being trampled or crushed. So on that note, what else has been happening all over the world regarding the young with heart attacks? Hmm? Have you guys seen the news that heart attacks amongst professional athletes has risen like 500 percent? 25 percent is huge. Okay, 500. Can you think of anything unusual? Got to connect the dots. I can't say anything. Can you think of anything unusual that all the professional athletes all over the world have done in the last six to eight months? Oh, and it was also required for people to get into this concert. They had a choice to do a swab test or to take the you know what but you know the you know what is free and a lot of these people are young i'm just saying a very high dosage of these people had it beyond that if you needed more reasons pointing to intentionality well all i'll say is that houston was chosen to be a pilot city for one two three four g this is an exciting day. In 2018, uh, Houston changed. became the third U.S. city to get Verizon 5G. And the stadium, that stadium, had the most recent version of this stuff. And here's the crazy thing. 
the security guards were admitting that they were told once the show started, their cell service would be turned off. It was just a mess. I'm listening to all the other people that's coming in as security guards. They're about to work. They are not even normal people. Like, they sound like they're not all the way there up there. And they were, like, a little off, a little slow. And um, then he was saying, like, okay, everybody needs to call their family, let them know, like, like you are right and what we about to be doing because in a few minutes, your service is not going to work. I don't know if that's like a normal thing at concerts because, yeah, that was not normal to me. That was very sketchy and very weird. And I was like, okay. So I started letting my family know, like, I'm not going to have service. What? Wh when does that happen ever? I tell you when it happens, when you're switching up frequencies to one that your phone isn't geared up to use just yet. Speaking of different frequencies, did you know that 60 Giga HZ was a form of G that also used to be openly admitted as being a military weapon. Huh. Crazy. Here they are admitting it in the 80s. Dr. James Frazier has researched electromagnetic effects for the Air Force for over 10 years. And he, like a small but growing number of weapons experts, feels that radio frequency, or RF weapons, could be the wild card in the ongoing arms race. You could have tremendous amounts of radiated power. And uh, what you did with that power then is a matter of engineering design and what, what your goal is. Robert Bass, a physicist and PhD in mathematics, is working on U.S. weapons research. He says that the Soviets seem to be ahead in a number of areas, and especially in RF weapons. We are behind uh, the Soviet Union in directed energy weapons based on 60 gigahertz microwave beams. We are behind uh, the Soviet Union in directed energy weapons based on 60 gigahertz microwave beams. And today, 60 gigs FIVEG is openly promoted as if it wasn't a known electronic military weapon 40 years ago. By harnessing the 60 gigahertz millimeter wave band, Qualcomm Technologies takes that Wi-Fi experience to the 5G era with 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. They're banking on people being too dumbed down or disinterested to figure that out. But then, just like the enemy loves to do, they'll turn around and admit that it's a weapon right inside their own advertising. We're ready. Hell yeah. Been looking forward to this. Two, Two one. Ready to launch. Hit the button. You gotta wonder why American company Qualcomm is getting so many military contracts and why longtime weapon dealers like Raytheon are the ones tapped to deploy our 5G if it's only for faster speeds. We also know that frequencies can be manipulated in a way that has a direct result on our emotions. Emotions like panic, rage. Electronic mind control research is not new. A scientific milestone in this area came in the 1960s when Dr. Jose Delgado demonstrated remote control over a charging bull. Delgado proved that the animal's aggressive impulses could be thwarted by electronically manipulating the bull's muscle reflexes. Do you realize the fantastic possibilities if from the outside we could modify the inside? Could we give messages to the inside? But the beauty is that now we are not using electrodes. In recent years, Delgado has shown that the behavior of monkeys can be altered using low-power pulsating magnetic fields. Function in the brain, emotions, intellect, personality, well, could be perhaps modified by this non-invasive technology. Del emotions, intellect, personality, well, could be perhaps modified. In the Soviet Union, a radio frequency or RF device has been used for over 30 years to manipulate the moods of mental patients. Any emotion you want to stir up in people to whip them into a frenzy of not caring about their fellow man can be accomplished. It's possible. It's old technology. So what really happened? You be the judge. But in my opinion, this was not only a literal soul harvest, this is a dress rehearsal. This is a dress rehearsal for what they are preparing to bring out on a much larger scale. But thankfully, and why I wanted to make this video 100% is because 
this is a last call for the young to awaken. You are God's children and you are being called to awaken for what evil meant to do in this horrendous event God is instead using for an incredible amount of good. And because God is all-knowing and all-seeing, you don't need me, you don't need a pastor, you don't need a church to hear directly from your Creator. Did you know that? You can simply, with all your heart, with everything within you, and in humility, call out to Him and ask for forgiveness for all the things that you've done that you know you shouldn't be doing, for following these false idols who were designed to destroy you. You can reach out to him directly. No middleman is required. Just that simple act. Just face down in all humility and ask to know the truth. Ask to know him. Maybe you don't even know if God is real. That's okay. Then you just tell him that with all humility. Just ask to be shown the truth in a way that I can understand it, Father. See, the world has intentionally removed all the fathers so that it makes people less likely to believe that they have a father in heaven. It's all by design. But a good father guides and protects you. Ask him to guide and protect you from evil, to give you eyes to clearly see the spiritual truth about who and what you've been following, to show you what kind of path he would have for your life. So many of us are trying to fill up a hole in our heart with things, with sex, with drugs, with even Netflix. (laughs) But what's missing is a relationship with our creator. So simple, really. And some people struggle with feeling guilty right? He can deliver you from all of the things you struggle with. You just have to give it to him. These things are what's making you feel more empty. But none of this change, this shift can happen without humility and without just being willing to turn away from it, to seek the whole truth, no matter what it costs. Okay, (laughs) I think I'm done. I hope this has helped someone. Say this with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.